spend time understanding what you're good at okay are you good at writing or do you like design or do you like public speaking you know so figure out what you're good at and what you enjoy mm -hmm. okay and then kind of start um, doing or taking up taking up more projects in this area it doesn't necessarily have to be paid at this point correct and then once you have a little bit of experience and you're a hundred percent sure you know i kind of like this i think i want to do more of this then start you know building a portfolio which is basically just a collection of things that you've worked on that's mm -hmm. it hello everyone Welcome to another episode of the Lalit Dhanu show. Today I have with me a dear friend and a junior from college. Her name is Maitli and she runs Mad Marketing Media which is a digital marketing agency and it's a super successful company. She recently clocked over 1 million dollars in revenue and has clients all across the globe. Now if anybody wants to become an entrepreneur or wants to get into the digital marketing space this episode is exclusively for you. For more such episodes, please do click on the subscribe button below and if you really like this episode, share it with your friends and also comment down below. Hi Maitli, welcome to the Lalit Dhanu show. How does it feel to be on my show? I'm very happy to be here. It's nice to see you. It's been a while. Yeah. And I mean, I think about a year's time and a lot has been changing since then. And uh, before we dive into that, I know for a fact that you at college were, co were a completely different person in terms of what uh, career choice you wanted to pick and uh, we had a great time being in the student council. What can you remember from the student council? Uh, I remember having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I remember it being very chaotic and <laughs> unfortunately I don't remember a lot of you okay. in the student council because you left after a year. I think we worked together just for one, one year. year. Yes. But yeah. I also remember the first time we got to interact and over several occasions we also teamed up in participating against various other colleges. One such memory was the St. Joseph's competition oh, yeah, <laughs> where me, you and Rohan were in the same team participating. I think uh, those were the good times and uh, I wish I could rewind and go back in time. I think we won that. Yes, we did. <laughs> we really did. So. Moving ahead, now Maitli, you're the owner and founder of Mad Marketing Media and it's definitely not your first business but I can say it's one of your most successful ventures. You, you also told me that you're close to reaching close to half a million dollars in revenue. That's insane because not many people by 24, 25 can see that much amount of success. Um, tell us a little more about your company and what you do. Okay, so Mad Marketing Media, we are a digital marketing company. So mm -hmm. what we do is we provide social media marketing services, PPC and all that uh, kind of stuff for businesses. And mm -hmm. we mostly work with, we only work with businesses um, in the US, UK, mm -hmm. uh, places like that. So yeah, that's what we do. Apart from that, we're also building a, a production vertical here for the local businesses where, you know, we do photos and videos and anything that a business could need. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> so did you ever think that you'd make half a million dollars in revenue at any point of time? I did. <laughs> I did, I'm not going to lie, but I just didn't know uh, that it would be with digital marketing because this is what I was doing when I was working full time. I was a full time digital marketer. I was working at another startup, mm -hmm. um, but I quit there to pursue Pink Flamingo mm -hmm. full time, which is my clothing brand. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea that I'd you know, kind of stop that and then again, you know, become a digital marketer because I was, yeah, I just didn't see it coming at all. Now, I mean, that's a great insight because no, many people when they listen to half a million or a million dollars in revenue, think that, hey, this person has been gifted with a great amount of talent, skill and there's for sure a serious amount of luck that's involved. So. I'm sure with Pink Flamingo, you, you know, you would have learned a lot of valuable lessons. Why did you pivot, number one? Uh, second, what, what was that incident which said, you know, digital marketing is the, pl is the place to be? Okay, so I didn't mean, you know, to pivot at all. I kind of had to. Um, so what happened was I was, you know, working full time mm -hmm. and then I kind of quit that job and then I was freelancing and doing Pink Flamingo, you know, mm -hmm. part time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I decided enough of this, let me just go all in and I stopped freelancing and all of that and I kind of went all in to mm -hmm. into Pink Flamingo. 
and I did that for some time, mm -hmm. but the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and um, it was just not a good time to be selling clothes, you know, mm -hmm. during the pandemic because mm -hmm. nobody was buying and that's when we were doing festive wear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, nobody is nobody is going to buy festive wear during a pandemic. It's so difficult to sell. Mm -hmm. um, and even if I really wanted to sell, even if I wanted to make it work, I physically couldn't because like my house was in a red zone area. The warehouse was in a red zone area. So you couldn't ship out products and we faced a lot of, you know, loss because of that. And it back then it was just smarter, you know, to slow down. Mm -hmm. So I did that. But in the meantime, I was like, okay, what do I do with my life now? <laughs> uh, and I spoke to Surin, you know, you know, Surin, Surin's great. Uh, and he told me that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, start freelancing again, see where it takes you. And I did that. And then before I knew it, I mean, I really enjoy digital marketing. It's not like, you know, I, I, I ever felt like I didn't like it. I really liked what I did at my job also. Um, so yeah, it, it just made sense. One thing led to another and I didn't, you know, really think too much about it either. If, if I felt like, you know, it was the right direction to go and I just did it and yeah, here we are. I think Maitli, what you did was not just a great move for yourself, but I think it was also a bold move because many people get so attached emotionally to the business that they're in. They're so scared to pivot, right? They're so scared to drop everything that they're doing and move in another direction. What gave you that confidence? Number one, you did say that you, you work there, but uh, to even take that different step, right? Did you, did you overthink it or were you scared of what other people will say? Yeah, 100%. And the reason I reached out to Surin was because I needed that <laughs> validation. Correct. And a lot of people told me, you know, of course, it's okay, no problem and all of that. But <laughs> to hear it from Surin, Surin was kind of like the validation that I needed. And mm -hmm. yeah, and you know, I, and like the revenue was coming in. So, you know, it, it was fine. Yeah. So now, Maitli, uh, let's say if Pink Flamingo went really well at that time, would you still have continued that or uh, are you happy with where you are right now? So, no, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> Mad Marketing Media wouldn't exist. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with, you know, where we are right now and I'm very excited about the future. And mm -hmm. even with Pink Flamingo, I'm excited about picking up, you know, where we left off from mm -hmm. probably in the month of Jan. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, nothing to lose. Correct. Yeah. And I think that's a very good idea because if you have one thing working for you, it's, it's a very optimistic and nice thing to feed off from and then continue your other journey of business. Now, you said you were a freelancer, right? Now, freelancing is not a very common word in the Indian household, especially if you want to go get yourself a job yeah. because parents want you to settle down immediately. They want you to immediately get something very secure. But freelance is like throwing yourself in the abyss and then seeing what you can actually get. Mm. Um, so what do you think uh, if somebody who wants to freelance, what do you think they should be doing? I think, see, first of all, with, you know, parents, the reason they think that and believe that is because it wasn't really a thing back, you know, when when they looked for their first job or even now, they're not too familiar with it, which is why that's where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. But apart from that, you know, honestly, I don't, if, if you want to be a freelancer, if you want that freedom of, you know, financial freedom, if you want the freedom of time, then freelancing is the way to go mm -hmm. okay and it's not as scary as it is especially now in 2021 anything that you want to learn you can learn on the <laughs> internet Correct. okay and if you want to do something that there, there are already so many people who've already done it so literally what you have to do is kind of copy them mm -hmm. and <laughs> that's it i mean and yeah yeah they say fake it till you make yeah. it right and i i don't see that there's any insult to it because in my public speaking journey one of the things that I always did was copy people who were really good on stage. I used to steal dialogues off them and use them on my stage. So I think what you said makes a lot of sense. Now, Maitri, can I also ask you that does freelancing and doing multiple things, because you did Pink Flamingo, you did freelancing, you still worked under a company. Doing multiple things gives you good amount of self-awareness or do you believe that you were able to truly understand what you want through this process? Yeah, and I, I still am, you know, every single day. And what I wanted five years ago is very different from, you know, what I want now. 
but that's the thing you know as mo the more you experiment the more you kind of realize what you like what you don't like what mm -hmm. you enjoy what you don't mm -hmm. so i think that's you know really important i think even with you right like you know what you're doing now is because you kind of picked up this picked this up as a hobby back when we when you were in school or college and if you never did that you'd probably doing be doing something very different right now <laughs> very true I agree with you on that one uh, when did you start this whole um, pink flamingo thing because as i know that's the first thing on the timeline when did you start did you start early or was it towards the end of college when did you start and what kind of struggles did you face there so with pink flamingo i don't really remember when it started because I always I really liked fashion I've always liked fashion and I've always liked business so mm -hmm. you know starting a fashion business was kind of the next obvious mm -hmm. step so I remember like looking for fabric looking up manufacturers and just learning how the business works and all of that from high school mm -hmm. but I think the first sale that we ever made or you know when we started approaching manufacturers and when i say me we back then it was my mom and i so that's okay. what that's what i mean by we mm -hmm. so we started doing all of that i think when i was in i want to say first pu or second pu yeah. wow that's i can say about 16 or 17 yeah and and for everybody who's watching this is something that i can say from experience from both our stories is that if you ever want to be successful in your own way not necessarily make half a million or a million dollars but in your own little way i think the ability to start early is very important and by starting early not really like figuring it out in a year saying this is what i exactly want to do but trying multiple things yeah. failing at it and failing your way up to success right yeah because no matter when you start like even if you start at 30 you are going to fail you are going to make mistakes so you might as well make those <laughs> mistakes when you're younger mm -hmm. you know cuz when you're younger you have lesser responsibilities True. and all of that you have more time to experiment so yeah i can imagine only the mental pressure that somebody might have starting at 40 it's not that it's wrong yeah. but it's a completely different ball game you're 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 physically not I'm capable of doing the things that you were able to do when you were 20 you're mentally not able to process so many things that you were able to do 20 and this I learned from looking at my father and mother because now when they look at me they say hey I wish I did this when I was your age yeah. have you gotten that from people older to you yeah I oh. get a lot of things from <laughs> you know people older than me but I don't think there's a mm -hmm. right time you know because mm -hmm. when you're in college people tell you oh, no you should focus on college you know mm -hmm. and when after you graduate people say no you know make sure you get some you know uh, work experience to make sure you have something to fall back on even mm -hmm. if this thing doesn't work out and then after that you know, people are like oh you're already doing so well at your job why do you want to you know do do Correct. whatever you want to do and then you become yeah. older and then <laughs> you yeah. life happens yeah now now mightly let's say i'm 18 years old or 21 years old and i want to become a freelancer what are the first three steps i must be taking and doing uh, beginning from understanding what your niche is okay so if you're 18 or you're 21 you have nothing to lose you're probably still in college um so spend time understanding what you're good at okay are you good at writing or do you like design or do you like public speaking you know so figure out what you're good at and what you enjoy mm -hmm. okay and then kind of start um, doing or taking up taking up more projects in this area it doesn't necessarily have to be paid at this point correct and then once you have a little bit of experience and you're 100% sure you know i kind of like this i think i want to do more of this then start you know building a portfolio which is basically just a collection of things that you've worked on that's mm -hmm. it and then start reaching out to clients the and if you are 18 or 21 you could literally just start reaching out to your parents friends businesses or just anybody who you think you could help mm -hmm. do it for free or do it for a very you know small cost uh, un until you have you know a good portfolio mm -hmm. and then start charging what you actually think you know you're worth that's that's it i really like the first uh, tip that you gave because recently when i did a workshop with uh, some of my business students a uh, lot of them asked me like lalit do i have to actually do an internship for free 
but i can't tell i mean i've emphasized over and enough to so many students of mine that doing it for free is in fact the best way to go because the person who's trying to hire you has nothing to lose there he can always reject your work on the other hand you know you you don't have the pressure that the person is going to put on you right uh, is there any other reason you think that you know you should work for free or what other uh, advantages are there working for free see i mean if you already have the skills right if you already have a portfolio um then definitely don't work for free it doesn't make sense nobody should be working for free but if if the objective is for you to figure out what you like what you don't like if the objective is for you to learn then do it for free cuz if, if if you look at it correctly you're not doing it for free you're doing it so you can learn you're Correct. doing it so you you get that experience so it's actually not free mm -hmm. so if you're a college student right if you're in second year then unless you actually have skills that can add value to whatever business or whatever company you're interning for then how can you ask them to pay you exactly uh, that's a that's a brilliant way of saying it because it's it's a give and take policy right and and you need to have something to offer at the yeah. table the second part of the same uh, answer that you gave which i really liked was sometimes when you're especially between 18 and 21 you don't tend to have a very credible network like usually your network is your friends your your friends near your house and your yeah. tuition friends that's the max but reaching out to people who who like possibly your parents might know can actually make a lot of sense uh, i mean can you explain a little more about that because your network is not very credible what do you think about that reaching out to your parents network So I I don't know you know it really depends on who your parents are friends with because <laughs> I mean I mean I'm just being you know very straightforward a lot of people that my parents know I would not mm -hmm. want to hang out with them because they'll it's just not a fun time I probably will not you know get anything from it then probably then you, then like feeling insecure or something like that so it really depends you know see what makes sense for you um look at other networks for example we live in we live in bangalore there are meetups that happen every single weekend they're free communities you know, yeah communities bni uh, not bni probably if you're 18 or 21 but toastmasters the student council like any council or club that's in your college correct so yeah it's just about talking you know to other people other than your closest friends i actually didn't do a lot of that back when i was in college or even when i was in school I don't I probably should have uh, <laughs> but now I do now I awesome. actually you know consciously talk to other people um consciously make that effort to talk to other people who are doing the same thing as I am so mm -hmm. yeah yeah like I think uh, the part where even if I know a friend whose dad has a good set of connections it's i think it's way easier to get through my friend to him yeah. and get through his inner circle even if my parents don't have any right yeah. and eventually if you work with 3 4 5 people like that and you give your 100% you have a credible portfolio that's going to take you a very far way yeah that's true did you do that uh, <laughs> yes uh, i i'll tell you one of the things that i did so i was like uh, like like you mentioned i was a part of toastmasters uh my first one of my first gigs where i got paid was because a woman walked up to me and said i really like the way you mc uh, why don't you come and do it for our event and i was like okay what event is this and then she hands over her card and it reads general manager of the hindu newspaper oh. right there was no way this person would have connected to me even irrespective of how good i was if it was not for toastmasters yeah. right so i think that's one of my big tickets that really got me there So, Maithi, moving on. If somebody has to switch a career, right? If somebody has to, uh, let's say, go from one specific area to another, the most important thing is to learn a specific skill. Yeah. What are some of the skills that require people in your business? Like, I mean, that are required in, for people in your business, like digital marketing. Can you name like three skills that are really important? Okay so if you want to be a digital marketer then you have to know one communication skills this means writing well and also having the ability to communicate with your clients communicate with your teammates doesn't necessarily mean speaking impeccable english it means you know having the ability to kind of communicate to other people what you have in mind and understand what they're trying to say and 
you know bring that into life okay mm -hmm. so that's one thing communication and then i think the second thing would be to kind of um, look at data and see what it's telling you to make the right patterns. decisions yeah look yeah, at patterns correct. that's another thing um yeah i think these are two things that you must have if you want to be a digital marketer apart from that it depends on what area again because even in digital marketing there are a lot of different things so i think the third skill would be your core you know skill if you're a content writer then you have to be a good writer you know yeah. if you want to be a graphic designer then you have to you know be good at that so yeah so you got to be specialized in one specific area and in bni we have a beautiful uh, uh, term called uh, specific is terrific mm. uh, and the more specific you are the easier it is for you to scale yeah. right so i think uh, the third one even though was something it is uh, respected to their domain i think that way people can actually scale now speaking of scaling uh, do you have mentors in your life uh, if yes then who are they and how have they added value to you okay so i don't have like a mentor that i have one on one access to or somebody that i speak to all the time i wish i did okay um but one person that i look up to a lot and i've told you this before is jack canfield mm -hmm. um you've read his um chicken soup series so for me it's his 64 principles book mm -hmm. so that's something that that book is something that i kind of go back to once a year or once in two years mm -hmm. yeah so i think there's a lot of things that i've picked up from that book and what can you give me a little more insight about what the book is and maybe give me a principle of that that you really like yeah so he literally covers the 64 principles that you should follow in life mm -hmm. to be successful to be happy and you know to be all the right things mm -hmm. okay so um one thing that i think i really liked is actually from the first chapter mm -hmm. and the first chapter is uh taking 100% responsibility mm -hmm. which means you genuinely believe and accept that everything that has happened to you um is because of you so whether that's a good thing it's because of you if it's a bad thing it's still because of you and it's okay mm -hmm. so i think just thinking of things that way um it it it's just it it makes a really you know big difference because there's no room for you to blame other people you know um and if if it's you you know if you genuinely believe that it's you 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 can if you can control it mm -hmm. if you blame other people which we all do i do that from time <laughs> to time it's out of your control as soon as you say it's not my fault it's this person's fault that's not something you can control but if you accept that it's your fault if this has happened because of me then i know that i can control it because it's me correct so yeah <laughs> so so mighty like you like you said owning everything not just the good part but also the bad and the shitty part of life is the only way to climb to success and for all the uh, viewers who are watching they might really think that you know uh, you've made it and all of that but what are some of the struggles that you faced through your life personally and professionally that that the viewers must know that nothing's ever rosy or nothing's too easy what are some of the struggles that you've gone through mm, i think uh one people not taking me seriously so that's something that really bothered me it still does mm -hmm. uh it's not easy you know being um, one a woman in business it's really not okay so um i know that because my co-founder my boyfriend rohan it's very different when he says something to someone and if i say the exact <laughs> same thing it's perceived very differently so that's one thing that's bothered me it still does so that's it's very different for women so that's one thing another thing is you know lack of knowledge so i always kind of knew what i wanted but i didn't know where to start or who to listen to so i think that's that caused a little bit of friction for me you know in the beginning uh, but then i realized that there is you know no right answer you kind of have to do different things and experiment with different things and that's the only way to kind of know we just covered that like 5 minutes ago um yeah but i wouldn't say you know i i to be very honest i've had a lot of struggles there have been a lot of inconveniences or i just don't like to look at it you know as as struggles yeah and mm -hmm. I, i think that's the optimistic side of you which says hey let's not look at look at it as a struggle but as an opportunity to grow learn and become much better the other thing that i also really liked was the things that you had to learn because a lot of us today in this education system i personally feel um 
you know, we feel that by the time you're 21, I've learned everything through my degree. Now I don't have to learn. Money will come. Great opportunities will walk into my doorstep. But the biggest part before learning, I personally feel, is unlearning. Yeah. Unlearning all the garbage that, you know, that the system feeds into us and, you know, that people put into our heads. And I think that's the way to go. Um, speaking of unlearning, I think as a woman, as a girl, a lot of them should again unlearn things that have come their way from the society. What advice do you have for girls who want to make it big and become financially independent and strong in their own life? What would you tell them? Say no to anything that you don't want to do. Be, be you know, it's okay if people think you're rude, but know exactly what you want to do and you know, do it no matter what other people say. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kind of work on it from as soon as you can. So, you know, don't wait for you to get your first job to be independent, you know, Correct. start from college, start picking up the skills sooner. It's, it's so easy, you know, right now. I know so many people who are doing it, you know. Um, so, yeah, do anything you want to. Don't take no for an answer and don't be af afraid to say no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's it. That's really all you need. Yeah, and I think that, that again speaks volumes because a lot of times society and parents are the, your biggest influencers into taking these decisions. Now, let's say, what if, you're, what if somebody's parents said no to them and what would, what would Maitli do then? Right? I, I, I know who you are, but I want the viewers to know this. If somebody said no, beat your own parents, you know, said no for, to do something, what would happen then? What, what would, how would you react to this? So, I mean, I would still do it anyway. <laughs> so, it didn't matter, you know, what they said. And, I, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing. When you start early, there, there's very, you know, little chance of them saying no. Because you, then you won't have to ask for permission in the first place. It's only when you ask is when people even have that option to say yes or no. So, if you start early, if you know what you want to do early on, then, you know, you never have to ask them unless, of course, you want money for something or, yeah. It's easy, right? And I think that's the starter's advantage that most, at least I feel most girls truly deserve. Because in today's day and age, many people are just said a no and there's no questions asked post that. And one advice that I also usually give to many girls is that, don't worry. Even if they say no, do it anyway. And once you start proving your results or once you start showing what you're truly capable of and somebody else walks up to your mom and dad and says, your daughter is doing fantastic. She has her own YouTube channel with 50,000 subscribers and then your parents will go, wow, yeah. right? It's until that moment you actually get them to because until then there, there's going to be a little bit of resistance. But once you break resistance, it's true triumph. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if you're growing up in this whole Indian household, then your parents have been saying no to most things anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> true. I think that's, that, I mean, that's, I, I think that's a very nice point because you're already used to it. Yeah. You, you better go anyways. Now, uh, last question, Maitli. Many people today don't take up the unconventional path being it being independent or you know doing something different or pursuing their own passion now if you're a, if you're a dancer let's pursue dance people are not thinking that way right what would you suggest or what would be your simple small little mantra for all these youngsters out there to pursue that unconventional path you have nothing you know to lose do what you really want to do if it's unconventional it's fine if it's conventional then it's easier for you but do what you want to do if it doesn't work out you have nothing to lose you can go back and do you know the other thing the other plan b that you had in mind anyway what what are you going to lose you're probably going to lose some time maybe some money if you're investing some money but you can always make more money anyway anyway and yeah uh, yeah i think on that note mightly uh, everybody must travel a road that is uh, less traveled and because that way you could leave a mark if not like you said there's always the highway which most people take and that's quite set for you on that note thank you so much for coming on to this show Absolutely. i for one have been really looking up to all the work that you've been doing thank you <laughs> and and you've been doing great and i think this podcast will serve as a wonderful inspiration for many girls out there who want to pursue their passion and truly become independent in whatever manner they are Thank you so much. And how did you feel about the show? I loved it. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> loved it. This is the first time I'm on a podcast. Lovely. So, yeah.
I'm glad it was the it was your first show, and yeah, I'm glad it was special. here. <laughs> Yay! So thank you, Maitli, and hope to see you soon on another yeah, episode. Absolutely. Done.